Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana yes. In the next five days, Kenyans will be going to the ballot to cast their votes. So this morning, ICT Secretary Joe Musheru met election stakeholders and he made it very clear that nobody will be allowed to relay or tally fake results. And that was seen as a warning to William Ruto and his team and even IEBC because William Ruto and his team are on record stating that they will be telling their results after which they'll just relay to their supporters or rather announce the results. So that was seen as a warning to William Ruto and his team. And in one way or the other, even a warning to some rogue commissioners at IEBC that they should not attempt even to interfere or even to rig the results. Immediately after that, Kenya Kwanzaa Brigade, led by Moses Masika Wetangula, called a press statement and he had this to say. That your minister for IT, uh, one Joe Mucheru, and some players in the ICT sector are <laughs> planning to set up a hacking center in some building uh, on uh, Waiyaki Way in Nairobi, uh, which uh, center is supposed to interfere with the airwaves uh, on the polling day and thereafter to disturb the activities of elections. Again, we'll hold you firmly responsible as a government for any activities, any acts or omissions that will lead to a compromise of a free and fair election. Because we expect nothing less let the people of Kenya decide if they vote for your preferred candidate, well and good. If they vote for a candidate you don't like, it's not your business. It's the business of the people of Kenya. Now, lastly, uh, we have uh, seen a lot of bravado from your Minister for Security. Uh, he's applying security arrangements in the country selectively. Your ministers are uh, availing facilities of uh, the government and the public selectively. For instance, we applied and paid for an astronomical figure of 1.5 million for Nyaya Stadium for our final rally on Saturday. All of a sudden, we are told you are going to have peace prayers at Nyaya Stadium. You have opened up Kasarani for our competitors of us near. You have closed Kamkunji for us that it is booked for something else. You've closed Jagaranda that is booked for something else. Like we have said uh, a day or two ago, if you do not open Nyayo Stadium for the Kenya Kwanzaa final rally on Saturday, we will hold this rally on the streets of Nairobi. We have identified the junction of Moy Avenue and Kenyatta Avenue, and Kenyans will fill up the streets of Nairobi. You are obligated to protect uh, business premises along those streets. That is where we'll have our rally. Yes. I don't know what you make of those remarks. But even before we dig deep into our analysis as usual, let me say this. Earlier today, TIFA research firm released their latest opinion poll because today is the deadline for all pollsters to release their results. You cannot release the results of an opinion poll less than five days to the election. So today is the last day. So TIFA released their latest poll, poll findings and you can see Raila Odinga is comfortably on the lead with 53%. William Ruto is at 52 at 45%. And yesterday, we also saw two pollsters releasing their results. We saw NTV through InfoTrack Harris showing Raila 49, William Ruto 41. And we also saw Ipsos, Raila 47, Ruto 41. So in all these opinion polls, you are seeing Raila Odinga has clearly opened a very big margin. So unless maybe a miracle happens, it's almost automatic that Raila Odinga will easily win 
this year's election. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, back to those sentiments or other remarks by Moses Masika Wetangula. Wetangula is insinuating that the government plans to rig this year's election. Wetangula is saying that the government is just setting up a hacking center along Waiyaki Way where they'll actually hack into IEBC servers to manipulate the results. And from that, those remarks by Moses Masika Wetangula, he is also talking of holding, or rather Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance, holding a rally in the middle of Nairobi, in the CBD. In this video, I want us to dissect <laughs> those remarks by Wetangula to see exactly what they mean politically. Before we do that, in case you are watching us for the very first time, subscribe, give this video a like. Thank you, God bless you, God bless Kenya. Yes. From those remarks and sentiments by Moses Masika Wetangula, Wetangula is confirming to the whole country that finally the deep state, the government, has overpowered William Ruto and his team. That's what I'm making of those sentiments by Wetangula. If William Ruto and his team had some schemes of influencing IEBC to rig this year's election, the deep state or other government has just thwarted those plans. So William Ruto and his team are actually left confused, disparate, and in a panic mode. Their schemes have actually been blocked. That's what I'm making of those remarks by Moses Masika Wetangula. And that, to me, those complaints by Moses Masika Wetangula to me, sounds like a good news to a good majority of Kenyans who wants free and fair elections. Secondly, from those sentiments again, Wetangula is actually stating clearly that they are going to hold a public rally in the middle of, of town, in the CBD. What does that mean politically? I'm seeing a William Ruto who has already sensed defeat. He knows he won't win the election. William Ruto and his team, their main aim now is to cause chaos, to cause violence, eh? to cause some tension. That's exactly what I'm seeing. And I'm saying that because you cannot hold a public rally in the middle of a busy town like Nairobi. That's just a, a loophole of allowing goons to storm into people's shops in order to loot. William Ruto and his team, they might have deliberately organized goons who will storm into people's shops. Out of it, maybe the police or other government will just actually react. And by government reacting, William Ruto and his team will actually claim the government was beating their supporters. Or rather, the government was trying to beat them. The main aim of that is for William Ruto and his team to get some sympathy votes. Because William Ruto and his team, in the recent days, all their political activities and maneuvers have all been pointing towards a disparate team seeking sympathy. Yesterday, we did a detailed analysis where we exposed some leaked WhatsApp charts where William Ruto's close associates were planning on how to gain sympathy in the remaining days. And that strategy of holding a public rally in the middle of town is just one of those schemes where William Ruto and his supporters will provoke the police into maybe reacting. Otherwise, they'll just claim that the police are actually beating their supporters and actually beating them. They are doing that to gain sympathy. And also on top of that point, William Ruto and his team might have deliberately organized goons. And from what we saw, uh, some sentiments made by Mike Sonko sometimes about, that in 2017 elections, they were printing ODM t-shirts and then they were giving those t-shirts to their supporters, who then go on storing stoning motorists along Langata Road to paint a picture 
that ODM are actually violent and how to cause maybe mm, to cause violence. I'm seeing William Ruto and his team most definitely going to maybe <laughs> do such kind of antics. They might even print Azimio t-shirts or ODM t-shirts or even their supporters themselves might actually <laughs> just maybe start stoning people in town. After we will claim that, you know, these were, th those were not our supporters, those who are ODM supporters or Azimio supporters. Those are games I'm seeing William Ruto and his team actually playing here. And for most of that press statement, I'm seeing a team that are already now acquainting themselves with opposition. If you hear a group of people talking of we want credible free fair election, and especially a people who previously never believed in that election, it shows that they're now scared, they're actually cornered. In 2017, as the NASA began were calling for free fair election, William Ruto was actually castigating them, and Ruto was telling them that they don't have numbers. Now William Ruto himself is now calling for credible free fair election. That shows tables have actually now turned against William Ruto. What goes around actually comes around. The same dish William Ruto served the opposition in 2017, most likely is the same dish William Ruto is going to be served in the next five days. Yeah, that's also what I'm seeing here. What William Ruto served the likes of Raila, that's what is also going to be served in the next five days. The only unfortunate thing here is that Moses, Moses Masika Wetangula and Musalia Mudavadi actually bore the brunt of William Ruto's atrocities in 2017. And in 2022, again, they have also been duped by William Ruto in also helping him actually carry the sins of William Ruto in 2017. It's a very unfortunate situation. And from where I sit, Moses Masika Wetangula and Musalia Mudavadi, they have actually made a serious political blunder. A blunder most likely, they'll just know its full impact after the five days. After elections shall have been done, after votes shall have been casted and counted. Wetangula Mudavadi, they are actually doing a disservice to themselves by actually joining into the pain of somebody who caused them a lot of pain in 2017. That's what I'm seeing there, ladies and gentlemen. Let me leave it there. In case you are watching us for the very first time, just as I did indicate when we were starting, subscribe, give this video a like. To our fans and subscribers here, I'm very much humbled, very grateful for the kind of support you are giving me here. God bless you. God bless Kenya. To any other person, that's the kind of analysis we do here. We don't beat about the bush. We go straight on to the point. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya.